welcome you to worship with us as we go through these services. The things that we're going to be talking about will be things for essential for our eternal life. Yes, and we pray that if you are questioning about the things that are being said, that you can always find the answers at this church. Yes. We pray now that the services that we're going to be rendering this morning will be rendered according to God's will and that we will take home the things that have been spoken and that they will be spiritual food for us to meditate on all of the week. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come this morning thanking you so much, Father, for your love, for your mercy. We pray, Father, that you would continue to keep us in thy care. Thank you, Father, for all of the blessings that you have blessed us with. As we travel the highways and byways, Father, you are there with us. As we're in our homes, Father, you're there with us. Every hour and every minute, you are with us, Father. Thank you so much, God, Father. Father, we pray now as this service is going to be rendered today that those things that are spoken will be words of encouragement, words of wisdom, and that we may learn how and know how to worship you. We pray, Father, now for this uh, minister, our minister here, who will be bringing us the message this morning. We pray that those words will be words and that will cause us to think along our journey. Yes. Then, Father, we pray that you will continue to bless each one of us who have come this morning. Yes. Those who come afar and those who are near, yes. you are with them, Father. Yes. Now, this prayer we ask in thy son Jesus' name, the Christ. Amen. He's my king. He's my king. All day long, oh, no, Jesus, yes, I, I am singing. singing. He is my song. Oh, joy will ever, ever be. All the while, he keeps my heart bells ringing. I sing and he's, he's my blessed my savior. savior. He's, he's my, my king. My every king. All of love, love all around my soul are flowing. From all his heart, love's everlasting spring. That is why my faith on him I'm showing. Showing that is an endless song I sing is my king, and oh, I dearly love him. Singing, he is my king. No other is above him. Well, now I sing that he's my blessed my Savior, he's my, my King, my blessed King. He In his life, I'm going home to glory with the soul of trust and saving grace. Praise I'm singing. 
singing, he's, he's my, my Savior, my King, my blessed King, Be because he lives. Because he lives. Scripture and prayer after him, because he lives. Yeah. God sent his son, they, they called him Jesus. Jesus. Stand for the reading of scripture. 
I'll be reading the scripture from the New King James Version, the book of Mark, second chapter, the verses 1 through 12. That's Mark 2, 1 through 12. And it reads, And again, he entered into a ca comparing him, and some days it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Yeah. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doubt this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. May God have a blessing on the hearers and doers of his words. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Father God, we thank you, Father, for allowing us to assemble ourselves here this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father God, we thank you, Father, for your darling son, Jesus, who died for our sins on the hills of my Calvary, on that old rugged cross, so that we may have the right to the tree of life. Thank you, Father. And Father God, we thank you, Father, for our ministers, our song leaders, and the leadership of this congregation. Father God, we just can't thank you, Father, enough for all that you have done and all that you're doing. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for the food on our table, the clothes on our back, and the shoes on our feet and the roof over our heads. Thank you, Father. Father, we pray for the homeless. Father, we pray for Ukraine. Father, we pray for Russia. And Father God, we know that you is in charge. Thank you, Father. And Father God, we pray for the sick ones among us, those that are at home, hospital, nursing home, or wherever they might be, Father, that stands in the need of prayer. Thank you, Father. Father God, you've been so good to us then some of us have been to ourselves, but we just want to thank you, Father. And Father God, you say in my house there are many mentions. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. Father, we thank you for going to prepare a place for us. Father God, we just want to thank you, Father, just for loving us, Father. And Father God, we just want to just say thank you, Father. And Father God, we pray Father, for, we pray, Father, for uh, our cousins, our brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers. Father God, we ask that you just bless all your people, Father. In these prayers we ask in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Uh, 
the precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from Cave Ridge Mountain in the cross. Savior, lead me on. Savior, lead me as I stand. Lead me Yes, sir. His grace 
Read just me. Yes. His grace reaches me. Mm -hmm. Deeper than the ocean and, and wider than, than the sea is the grace of the Savior for sinners like me.
smile on me, church, and I, it's been so good to me. Hey, we're singing amazing ray. Oh, Lord, how sweet the sound that says a wretch like me. Well, I want what we are, but now I, oh, Lord, was blind. But now I see we're singing a God. Who has my on me? Oh Lord, and He has set me free. Oh God, oh Lord, He's my. Oh Lord, He He's been. Shining at the sun, we know no day to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Oh, we'll sing in God, God has lost my on me, oh Lord, and He has said. Be free for a singing God. Has smiled on me. He's been good. He's been good. Oh Lord, He's been. Every morning He's been good. Every evening He's been. In the midnight hour. Been good, sure enough. Good, he's been good when we needed it. He's been good to me. God has smiled one more time, and we're just thankful to God for His abundant grace. Good to see you this morning, and we're praying for the many who are traveling. Pray for our minister emeritus, who's in uh, North Carolina preaching this weekend uh, with Brother O, and for his anniversary. And we're thankful to God that he was able. They arrived safely in the Madison. Pray for them that they'll have a safe return, and he'll have a grand time of the Lord. Pray for Brother Stacks, who's also out of town, and others who are traveling. We'll pray to God for traveling graces. Uh, we're thankful to God for you who are here, especially those who are on the airways and those who may be new to our broadcast. We're thankful to God uh, for you who have got on this morning, whether YouTube, Facebook, conference call, whatever the means. We're just thankful to God uh, because we know God's been good to you and because we see you. Amen. And uh, we pray God's blessings on you this holiday season. Uh, there's still many who are still coming back in town, and I pray to God that you had a great uh, Thanksgiving weekend last weekend, and we're thankful to God for those who were able to be on yesterday in our personal evangelism class, and we're having a great time in the Lord, studying those things needful for the Bible and needful for our growth. Uh, we're also thankful to God to those who are working diligently with helping those ladies who need help at the uh, home there and for the goods that you have donated. Uh, we're thankful to God to the benevolent spirit that you've had here uh, these holidays. For there are some who are hurting, there are some who are yet bereaved, there are some who are yet perplexed. I'm going to ask you to pray for our dear sister Jackie Dunn. Uh, Jackie uh, lost her mother uh, this weekend and we're praying for Jackie. She was here last Lord's Day and, and we're praying for the efforts with that family. Also pray for Sister Doss, who lost her great uncle, uh, her mother's uh, uh, great friend, best friend, brother. Uh, and this weekend also, uh, Harry Scott. And we pray for the Scott and the uh, Doss and the Kendall family uh, in this hour of bereavement. 
Church, you don't know, you just don't know what's on tomorrow. But you do know if you're wise enough who holds tomorrow in his mighty hand. We're thankful to God that Malachi says that God is the same. As well as the Hebrew writer said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're thankful to God that he's promised that he will never leave us, nor, Hebrews 13, 8, forsake us. And you can put your trust in a stable, unchanging, ever-abiding Heavenly Father. If you have your Bible, it's going to ask you to turn with us over to the Gospel of the book of Mark. Mark, the second chapter. I want to thank uh, Brother Bolden for those songs this morning. Amen. Amen. And Brother Bolden was over here, and then he was at Brownsville uh, last week, and being used for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to pray for us. We have to go to Deerfield this morning after our worship uh, to encourage the church there at the Deerfield Church of Christ. Uh, they've asked us, as you know, Brother Ward uh, is uh, uh, recovering from uh, some accident that he's had, and we're thankful to God that he's getting strong. He was there with the preachers on yesterday morning as we were there in Hollywood uh, with the preachers planning for the next year's lectureship uh, that will be here in Miami in August, the Florida State Lectureship. And Brother Ward is doing well, and he's coming along uh, on a walker, but he says he's happy uh, to be in the land of the living and pray for Brother Ward uh, uh, as he recovers, as his uh, appreciation is just uh, two weeks away. And we pray to God that we'll share uh, in his appreciation. Luke, the fourth chapter, second chapter, excuse me, verses number 1 through 12. Luke, the second chapter, verses number 1 through 12. Mark, Mark, excuse me. Uh, I don't know, Luke, the fifth chapter, if you got it, the same text, amen. I got those two texts in my heart, a amen. Uh, but there are two texts that deal with a man who has a dilemma. And how he was helped uh, by four who were concerned. The Bible says, and again, straightway he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together inasmuch as there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four, underscore that. And when they could not come nigh to him for the press, for the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick man of palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. But there were certain haters, certain scribes, who were sitting there, reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately, when Jesus perceived in his heart and his spirit that they had reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why are you reasoning these things in your heart? Whether it is easier to say the sick of palsy, your sins are forgiven, or is it easier to say, Arise up from thy bed and walk? But that we may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick in palsy, I say unto thee, Arise. Take up your bed. Go back home. And the Bible says immediately he arose. He took up his bed. <laughs> he went forth before them all in so much that they were amazed. And they glorified God saying, we've never seen it like this before. <laughs> oh, these four men, these four men. You know, coming to the church building early this morning, coming around the corner, I saw four individuals coming down the ramp very slow. And early this morning, they were helping a sister. 
Sister Sandra Jones wants you to pray for her. She comes early every Sunday morning, but she fell sick this morning. And these four individuals carefully took her to her car, and she was assisted home. <laughs> I thought it was very strange how my lesson deals with four individuals this morning. Four individuals of loving care. Whatever God does is no mistake. Whatever God does is according to his will and for our benefit. Amen? <laughs> These four individuals, when we look in our lesson, we see that there is a lot of goodness going on here. What do you see? Well, first of all, we understand that Jesus has been preaching, if you go back to chapter 11, and healing folk here and there, up and down, all in the streets, all in the place. And not only has he been healing folk, the crowds have been growing and growing and growing. But Jesus clearly states his priority. In Luke 19, 10, he says, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. He performed mighty miracles. He had a great mission. He had a great ministry. But his priority was to persuade people, lost people, to come to the great physician. Jesus has commissioned us to carry out that great commission. And in the four Gospels, you'll see that each one of these Gospels that the Great Commission is mentioned. Yes, we must go with prayer. We must go with compassion. We must go with concern. We must go with commitment. But we must be dedicated to the cause of saving souls. Amen. And as we get to the end of 2022 and go into 23, I pray that next year we will have just a fervor of saving souls. Matthew 28, after Jesus had resurrected, he came, and the Bible says in the 28th chapter, about verse 13 through 15, it says the disciples were still doubting. Some saw his miracles, some saw him raised from the dead, they still doubted. <laughs> but when we get to verses number 18, Jesus says, and Jesus says unto them, All power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you even to the ends of the world. It is a command to make disciples. It is a command, to, and we'll talk about that a little later in our conclusion, uh, if the Lord says so. And then Mark, not only does Matthew talk about going, Mark says in Mark 16, 15 and 16, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. But not only that. In Luke chapter 24, verses 46 and 47, it said, Thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and thus it behooved him to die and to rise again on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in my name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. But not only does Matthew give the commission, not only does Mark, not only does Luke but John briefly says, in John 20, 21, John says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even I am sending you. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Y yes. Well, what we have to understand is, when we look in, in Mark, our text today, verses number 1 through 12, we read of four men who realize the importance of bringing someone to Jesus. That they realize the importance of bringing people to the great physician. And it was four men. Th thank God it was four men, not four women. Amen. Amen. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all will get that on the way car. They probably lacked uh, the studiousness of the Bible that we have because they didn't have it. That they lacked probably an understanding of what evangelism was all about. But they did know that this man needed some help. 
And in this passage, they went past tremendous obstacles to get this man to Jesus. Lord willing, this morning, we'll look at four of these uh, great emulations that we need to follow that these men had. Number one, they had loving concern. Amen? Number one, all four of them were linked in cooperation. Now, now, now number three, uh, they were lively in their creativity and they had lasting commitment. Let me run that by you again. And that's your sermon. You can go on home with it now. Uh, first of all, they had loving concern. And secondly, they were linked together in cooperation. Thirdly, they had a lively creativity. And then fourthly, they had a lasting commitment. You know, one of America's favorite pastimes uh, is playing cards. I don't know. Some of y'all adjust your halos now. Fluff out your wings. Some of y'all don't believe in playing cards. But when we were at Southwestern, we spent hours. Uh, especially That was the only way we could communicate with the sisters is in the evening time to go over to the girls' dorm to the lobby and play cards. A amen? Hey, hey amen. Y'all looking at me funny. Huh? I didn't say checkers. I say cards. And I didn't say chess. I believe one young man was playing checkers because a young la lady said, if you make another move like that, I'm going to crown you. Amen? <laughs> but, but anyway, we would spend hours, uh, and relationships were developed in playing cards, sitting there playing cards. A a and friendships were established, and some enemies were made, amen, uh, in playing cards. But, but some people love to play poker, a amen? I didn't say gamble, I said play, a amen? Good to have family activities, good to have family games. Uh, and uh, in poker, I'm told that when you play poker, that every now and then you'll get a full house. It's hard to get a full house, uh, but the probability of getting a full house is rare. Full house. But three of one, two of the other, a full house. But then it's even harder to get four of a kind. The probability is very slim in getting four of a kind. But let me tell you something. Four of a kind beats a full house every time. I said four of a kind. These men all were four of a kind. The house was full, but four of a kind beat a full house any time. Church, when we work together, when we have our mission and our motives in common, when we have our aim pointed in the same direction, we can do more than a full house of folk who don't care. Amen? I need some help this morning. For a short while, we want to deal with the subject, four of a kind beats a full house every time. In order to have four of a kind beating a full house, number one, you've got to have some loving care. Somebody has got to be so concerned with lost souls, uh, with sick, with hurting, with dying folk, uh, that they're able to come to the aid of individuals who are hurting, individuals who don't have Jesus. As we look at our text, it should be noted that this paralyzed man was in a dilemma. Not only did he have a life-limiting situation and an illness, but he was dependent on others for his daily life. Without others, it would have been impossible and difficult for him to be healed by Jesus that day. Without others, uh, it would be possible, impossible for him to hear the sweet peace of Jesus and hear his voice say, your sins are forgiven. God has given us the great commission, go ye, and he's given us the great commandment to love one another. Amen. But it involves others. To be fulfilled effectively, it involves others. And church, let's get busy about others. There are millions of folk who need to get to Jesus. That they need to get to the great physician and they have no one to assist them, no one to help them. We have some good news today, though. In our lesson, we have Exhibit A, 
of how to get somebody to Jesus. Amen. That was given by these four of a kind. Now, there are some knowns and there are some unknowns in our text today. Number one, we don't know. We don't know uh, how this man became paralyzed. The Bible doesn't say. We, we don't know his name. The Bible doesn't even give him a name. We, we don't know the name of his four friends. Amen. Uh, we don't even know how they got together. We don't know what method they used to tear open that roof to drop him down to Jesus. Or uh, how they even found out about Jesus. But we do know that these four men love this man enough to care for him. We, we do know that they were determined, no matter what, to get this man to the Savior. We do know that they loved him enough to end their appointment and to make an appointment with Jesus. A amen. And we do know that they put a plan together. They put a plan together and they worked the plan. And we do know that Jesus thought enough of this man to forgive his sins, to stop what he was doing, and heal this man. Or a full house presented a barrier. A full house presented some obstacles. A full house presented a dilemma. But four of a kind solved the problem with Jesus. Have you ever been in a dilemma where you thought no one cared? Huh? I've been there. David has been there on many occasions. When you go to Psalms 124, in Psalms 124, David says, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, he said, Israel, say with me, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, men would have rose up against us, and then they would have swallowed us quickly with their wrath that was kindled against us. And then the waters of their wrath would overflow us and it would go over our souls. And then the pride of the waters would have gone over our souls. But blessed be the Lord who hath given us not over to our prey that they may use their teeth on us. For our soul has escaped them like a bird out of a snare, out of a trap. Our soul has escaped them. Oh, our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. David said God showed him mercy. And so we need some loving kindness. What these four men exemplified were the four C's of love. Love is a commandment. Love is a choice. Love is conduct. And love is a commitment. First of all, love is command. We are commanded. John, the love writer, 2 John chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. We are commanded to love. Amen? Amen. He says in verses number 4, of 2 John chapter 1, he says, you know what, I rejoice greatly that I found my children, my church, walking in truth as you receive the commandment from the Father. And now I beg you, I beseech you, lady, church, uh, that I'm writing to you, no new commandment, but that which was from the beginning, what was that commandment? He says, the commandment that I saw you exemplifying was love one another. And this is love that we walk after the beginning and we need to walk in it. Church, you can't always control your emotions. Sometimes your emotions get the best of us. But God would never command us to do something that we could not accomplish, that we did not have the power and the ability to do. That means love is not a feeling. Love is an action word. Yes. Imagine seeing someone hurt and crying and walking up to them and saying, I command you to stop crying. Do you think they're going to be happy all of a sudden? No, because love is a command. And then secondly, love is a choice. You choose or not choose to love someone. Amen? The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, follow after charity. Run after love because love is worth running after. 
It means that you choose to follow love instead of hate. I can't tell you how many times I've sat with couples who have counseled and said, Brother Dawson, I just don't love my spouse no more. I, the spark is gone, and I, I just don't love them anymore. As though they did not have anything to do with it. You choose to love or not to love because love is an action. And sometimes you just don't feel like loving, but God says love anyhow. God so loved the world, even in our sins, Hebrews says, while we were yet sinners, he sent his son to die. He didn't wait on us to get straight, but he loved us anyhow, just like we were. A amen? Yeah. So you choose to love others. Love is a choice, and then love is a conduct. Not only did God command it, not only do you choose to do it, but love is an action word. 1 John 3, 18, the Bible says, my little children, let us not just love in word, but let us love neither in tongue, but let us love in deed and in truth. It's an action. Indeed, these four men chose to do something when they saw a situation that needed attention. They chose to do something. Every day, we're given an opportunity to do something. We're given an opportunity to demonstrate love. We're given an opportunity to help somebody along the way. Have you ever said in a situation, say, you know, I should have called so-and-so. I should have visited so-and-so. I should have taken so-and-so something to eat. I should have prayed for so-and-so. I should have helped my neighbor. Don't miss the opportunity. When you think about it, do it but not only is it our conduct these four men these four men saw a job to do and they jumped on it God is love first John 4 16 not only that but love is a commitment love is a commitment you've got to be committed and we're going to look at this a little further in our text uh, love is a commitment. First John 4, 16, the Bible says, and we have known and we believe or we trust the love that God hath to us. First of all, John said, we know God loves us because God is love. Now, he that dwelleth in love, he that is committed, who that keeps on loving, dwelleth in God. And God dwelleth in him. <laughs> it's amazing how when you decide that you're going to love that the spirit of God dwells in you and you dwell in him. Our relationship with God is largely affected by our relationship with one another. And if we commit to loving and stay in love then we will keep our hearts with God, and God says, I'll be with you. Thank God. The love and the care these four men possess for four of a kind beats a full house any day. Oh, they possess the love like no other. But then not only that, if you're going to have the love these four men had, the church, you're going to have to be linked in cooperation. We're going to have to be linked in cooperation. You remember Apostle Paul? Paul had great workers all around him. Let's go to Timothy. First Timothy. Second Timothy, rather. Second Timothy, chapter 4, beginning at verse number 9. When we look at the Apostle Paul, Paul was a living example of evangelism. He went everywhere telling folk, helping folk, getting uh, help, benevolence for churches that were in need. Paul was a living example. And he says to young Timothy in Second Timothy, chapter 4, Verse number nine, he says, Timothy, do your best, do your diligence to come to me shortly. Hurry up, Timothy. Come on unto me. Why? Because Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. 
and he's departed unto Thessalonica. Cretans has gone over to Galatia. Titus has gone to Dalmatia. And only Luke is still with me. He's hanging tough with me. So what I want you to do, Timothy, go get Mark. Bring old John Mark, because he's profitable to me now. And Tychicus, I've sent over to Ephesus. And don't forget, verse 13, my coat. <laughs> when you come, don't forget my cloak. Uh, it's, it's getting cold, Timothy. I need you to get here before winter time, too. Don't forget, I left my coat over there at uh, Troas with Carpus. Carpus got my coat. Go get my coat and bring me my books and especially uh, my papers, my parchments. The problem was not that Paul did not have enough workers. Paul had enough men around him. He had enough brethren in the region. But the problem was that he didn't have living, active, available laborers. Oh, we got brethren and sisters. Hey, amen. But do we have living, active, and available laborers? Don't answer. Mark writes that there were so many folk there in that house that they blocked the door. You couldn't get in the window. You couldn't get in the door. So they got together. They were linked in cooperation. They put together a plan, and they got together and got on the rooftop. Back in those days, the houses had staircases sometime outside of them, and they would have staircases, and they would uh, be able to climb on the rooftop and sun and sometimes get away from the crowd. But they came together. They cooperated together. Amen? Now, when, when they came up with the idea, and I don't know who came up with the idea. It really doesn't matter. Uh, they worked the idea together. The job does not get done without somebody coming up with a plan. And, and, and the mat that this man was on apparently had four corners because it took four of them to carry this man. There was no arguing. There was no fussing. There was no complaining. There was no asking who's going to be in charge. There was no saying who's going to get the credit. They didn't ask how much we're going to have to spend at the bank. They didn't ask if we tear up this roof, how we're going to put it back together. They didn't get upset. Uh, uh, if they had gotten upset, the job would have never gotten done. So they went on and did the job. They didn't worry about, well, what if we get sued? No. We're going to go ahead on and do the job. The main objective was getting this man to Jesus. Love motivated them to work together. Teamwork makes dream work. Amen. Amen. The indictment on the Corinthian church that Paul had was that they didn't have unity. They didn't have teamwork. So when you get to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses number 10 through 13, Paul says, now I beseech you, brethren, that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, and that you be perfectly cooperated, joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment, for it had been declared for me by the house of Chloe, that y'all fussing, y'all fighting, there are contentions among you. Now I say to every one of you, everybody who says I'm a Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, or I'm of Christ, you're divided. But the question is, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? The beauty of the church at Acts, in Acts the second chapter, is that they worked together. They cooperated. They worked together in the first century. The Bible says in chap chap chapter 4 that they even had all things in common. Amen? And they were able to work together. See, to work together, fasten your seatbelt, you must have an atmosphere of trust. Amen? On any given Sunday, I can count on certain individuals to be here every Lord's Day doing the will of the Lord. Ready to go. Huh? An atmosphere of trust. Trust is the bedrock of any good relationship. 
Thank God we've got some good sisters and brothers here who we can put our trust in. Amen? These four men trusted each other. You hold your corner. I hold my corner. You hold your corner. We hold all four corners, and we're going to get this man some kind of way to Jesus. Trust is like a bank account. You got to make regular deposits. If you don't make regular deposits, your trust is going to be bankrupt. Amen? Let me smile. So therefore, trust made it perfectly clear that one man couldn't do the job. One man couldn't accomplish this. You see, a three-legged table has one good use for it, and that is firewood in the wintertime. Amen? You got to have cooperation. The Bible says, and Mark and Matthew, rather, the ninth chapter, verses 36 and 37 and 38, the Bible says, and Jesus said unto them, the harvest is plenteous, verse 37, but the laborers are few. So do we sit around, complain about the few? It's always going to be few. He says, what I need you to do is pray. Verse 38, he says, pray therefore to the Lord of harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Pray that God will send forth laborers into the harvest. I got news for you. Cooperation is essential. It's essential in the Christian work today to make a success. Complaining won't get the job done. Unfinished tasks won't be completed by griping and murmuring. But cooperation, working together, we can get the job done, church. Amen. What cannot be done alone can be done by a team. Now, we don't need superstars. A amen. One superstar can win a championship. I don't care how many superstars you got on the team. You can have all the LeBron James you want. But you got to learn to work together. Amen. You see, Nehemiah, Nehemiah had the idea. He came up with the brainstorm of rebuilding the walls. But when he got down there to Jerusalem, uh, chapter 4 and the verse 6, the Bible says they had a mind to work. They had their minds made up together that we're going to get this thing done one way or the other. If we got to fight, if we got to swing till we hit something, we're going to get this job accomplished. In 1 Corinthians 3 and the verse is 9, the Bible says we are laborers together with God. God's husbandry. We are God's building. Unity can prevail. The job will get done. Unity must prevail. Ephesians 4 verses 1 through 7. Thank God. These four men didn't let the spirit of self-centeredness get into them. They didn't let the spirit of, I'm the star performer, y'all can't do it without me, get into them. Amen. They did not have the spirit of inconsideration. They considered this man. They wouldn't let that spirit rise up in them. Uh, they didn't have the spirit of being unprepared. They didn't have the spirit of negativism, of complaining, of murmuring. They didn't have the spirit of who's going to get the preeminence. No, they put their minds together and they cooperated. Thank God that they worked together to get this man to Jesus, four of a kind. Is better than a full house any day. Amen? amen. And then thirdly, y'all say amen, they had lively creativity. Now, somebody had to be creative to think, well, we can't get in here. We can't get in there. We're going to have to tear the roof up. We gonna, somebody had to be creative to get there. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, I've heard this scripture quoted many times and misapplied but he's talking about the vision that God has without God's vision uh, we will perish we will fail it is said that Queen Isabella of Spain before Columbus left Spain her motto in Spain was ne plus ultra N E. P-L-U-S-U-L-T-R-A, which means there is nothing more 
beyond. In Spanish, ne plus ultra. There is nothing more beyond. But after Columbus went out and came back the first time, she said, I need to take the nay off because there is more <laughs> beyond. If you have a perspective that is limited, your vision is limited, then you are in trouble. Liberty City, we have not begun to touch the surface of what God has in store for us, but you got to have some creativity. You got to get out of a rut of doing the same thing the same way and expecting different results. Amen? You've got to be have vision and the creativeness of God. They, they said, let's give the building some air conditioning. Let's open the roof. Amen? The Bible says in Ephesians 3 and the verses 20, now unto him, who is the him? God. Unto him that is able, Ephesians 3, 20, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, above all that we think, according to the power that he works in us. Now, God's got the power, but he'll give us the power if we trust in it. These four men tried to get to him in the regular way, the front door, the windows, but they had to be creative. They had to put forth an effort. And the main objective was getting this man to Jesus. Praise God, they got him there. Amen? Amen. Praise God, I don't know what it took to dig that roof up. I don't know what they had to go through when you get to Luke, the fifth chapter. I don't know, Luke tells us that they tore up the top. I don't know, but they did it. Many lessons can be learned that are vitally important. And COVID, you know, has taught us many lessons. You have to up your game, technology. You have to up your game in your methods. But the message has to stay the same. Amen? Amen. And you got to get out of a rut of doing the same thing. The folk are not doing the same thing the same way anymore. Amen. They have more folk working from home now than they've ever had in the history uh, of the world. And therefore, jobs are everywhere. But workers have gotten smarter. They've gotten more creative uh, in making a means to the end. Amen? So we must pray, church. We must work hard. We must be willing to do whatever God directs our hearts and our minds to do to get folk to Jesus. And then lastly, y'all say amen. Y'all got quiet on me. They had a lasting commitment. Oh, they opened that roof, and they said one way or the other, we're going to get him there, and therefore they had a lasting commitment. The main aim was getting him to Jesus. Now, all the other examples, having a loving concern, you got to have that. You got to be linked in cooperation, yes. You got to be creative uh, in your uh, vision, a amen. You got to have a lively vision. But if you're not committed to finish the job, then all of these other things will do you no good. Church, you can't give up. You, you've got to be resilient. Uh, you've got to have some stick to itiveness. Now go back to 2 Timothy, brethren, as we close. Go back over there and look at Paul. Paul, remember we started at verse number 9, 2 Timothy 4, verse number 9. He says, Timothy, hurry up, come with me. Do your diligence to come with me shortly. He says, hurry up, get to me, because folk are leaving left and right. Uh, Demas has forsaken me. He says, in Cretans, uh, gone over to Galatia, Titus to Demacia. Uh, but then if you pick up verse number 14, verse number 14, he says, even Alexander the coppersmith, here's a man with skills, he did me much evil. And the Lord is going to reward him for his works. Beware of him, Timothy, because he withstood my words. And he says, at my first answer, when I had to go before the judge and answer to the judge, no man stood with me. Verse 16, he says, all of them, 2 Timothy 4, 16, all of them, <laughs> not one of them stood with me, all forsook me. But I prayed to God that he would not lay this sin to their charge. Nevertheless, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and he strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known to the Gentiles that they may hear 
that I have been delivered out of the mouth of a lion, four-footed lions and two-footed lions. Amen? God delivered me out of the mouths of lions. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and he'll preserve me he'll keep me church unto his heavenly kingdom unto his glory forever and ever amen now some might say well paul paul's having a pity party no he's not paul is just telling it like an it is amen sometimes you just got to tell it like it is church let folk know who's on god's side let folk know who's not on god's side you just got to tell it if folk have deserted folk have deserted Paul was not having a pity party. Matter of fact, if you drop it to verse number five, Paul says, Timothy, I want you to watch thou in all things, endure the afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. Why, Paul? Because I'm ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished. I finished. I was committed. I didn't give up. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me the Lord a crown of righteousness that the righteous judge shall give unto me at that day, but not unto me only, but to all of them who love his appearing. Paul says, I'm not, I'm not dead. I'm not going to stop. Church, don't stop. These four friends say, we're not going to stop till we get this man to Jesus. I don't care what we got to do, but we're going to get this man to Jesus. They didn't make excuses. They didn't say, why, why, why? When the crowds prevented them from getting him to Jesus one way, they got him to Jesus another way. Galatians 6 and the verses 9. The Bible says, don't get weary in well-doing because in due season, you're going to get the victory. You're going to reap if you don't give up. If you don't faint, church, if you don't throw your hands up and wallow your head, you're going to reap. Praise God. We're going to reap. What a promise. What a promise. We're going to reap. With God, all things are possible. In my conclusion, y'all say amen when you can. In my conclusion, <laughs> Solomon said in the long ago, if you're going to do something, Ecclesiastes 9.10. He says, if you're going to do something, do it with all your might. Amen? If it's worth doing, church, it's worth doing well. It's worth doing with all of our might. It's worth doing with all of our tasks. It's worth doing with all of our will. He says, because there is no knowledge, there is no wisdom where you're headed. And that's to the grave. Once you die, you can't do anything. Amen? So he says, if you're going to do it, do it with all your might, Ecclesiastes 9 and the verse. And then if you go up to chapter 7, verse number 8, Paul, uh, the ecclesiastical writer Solomon said, he over there, he says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. He says it's better to not give up in the middle, but keep on fighting. Y'all quiet, church. He says in Proverbs 12 and the verses 24, he says in the long ago, he says, now the hand of the diligent shall be the ruler. He'll be your leader if you're diligent, if you work hard. He says, in the hands of the lazy are going to become the slaves. So the question is, are you diligent? Are you lazy? Paul says in Philippians 3 and verses 14, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Paul says, I'm pressing. I'll keep on swinging <laughs> till I hit something. You see, the Great Commission, if you notice the Great Commission, when Jesus talked to them, one, if you go to the 28th chapter of the book of Matthew, you'll see about verse number 13 through 15, the Bible says he came to the 11. Why 11? Because one had gone on and killed himself. One had betrayed. He was the one who was the educated one. Now, I'm not saying that God can't use educated folk. He was the one who held the bag. He, he was the one who was the accountant, Judas. If you study the history of Judas, he was one of Judea who was educated. Amen. What am I saying, preacher? God 
son went to common people, common fishermen, common laborers, common workers. A amen. He went to common folk. Now, let me tell you something. God can use common folk. Amen. 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 Now, if you got a PhD, that's just icing on the cake. If you got a degree, that's icing on the cake. But you don't need all that to work for the Lord. I don't know who these four men were. But not only that, not only uh, is the commission to common folk, but the commission is, is just make disciples. Make folk like I've made you. Corinthians 11 and verses 1, Paul said, Be ye followers of me as I am of Christ Jesus. Just reproduce what I've done, Jesus says. And if you do that, if you teach them whatsoever I've commanded you, I'll be with you. Always, even to the ends of the world, I won't leave you. If you'll just do what I ask you to do, and you ask folk to follow what I've asked them to follow. The question is, do you have the courage, do you have the love and concern this morning to follow Jesus? Do you, are you linked in cooperation with a congregation working, doing the will of God? Where are you? Where, where are you? We, we got to stay together. We got to work together so that we can go to glory. A amen? amen? The story is told about a young man who was with his young lady friend out on the water. And I'm sure I've told you this before, and they were out there looking in one another's eyes out on the lake. And all of a sudden, a wave came and turned that boat over. And there they went in the water. And he got back to the boat, and he saw her, and he reached out for her hands, and her Lee press ons came off. <laughs> he tried to get her around the head, and a wig popped off. He said, well, let me grab her around the chin, and her teeth came out. He says, baby, if you want me to save you, you got to stick together. <laughs> Church, if we want to be saved, we got to stick together. <laughs> Amen. God is a good God. God is a loving God. Will you come to him this morning? You've heard his word. You have sense enough to believe in what you've heard. Repent of your every sin. Then after you've repented, Confess him as the sweetest name that can ever be confessed. And then be buried in the grave called baptism. Let me tell you something. The water is ready. The clothes are ready. Are you ready? We'll take you down and we'll meet Jesus right now. If you come on down the aisles. This morning you can go home rejoicing that your sins are all washed away. Praise God. What a wonderful day. If you've fallen by the wayside, rededicate yourself. If you're out there on the airways, come on, contact us. LCCCMiami.org. LCCCMiami.org. Give us a comment. Let us talk to you. We'll love to commune with you. Come on right now. As together we stand and sing. Come right now. Come on to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He will save, save you. Though your sins and scrubs are lost. If you give your heart to Jesus, he will make it wide. Come on. No. Come on to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come, come today, come today, come to Jesus. Is one? Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come, come today. It's not too late. Come to Jesus, come to heaven. Mercy gave, oh, delay not till tomorrow. Let the comments be too late. It's not too late. Come on to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Right where you are. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come today. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come, come today. Amen.
Good morning, church. I come before you at this time for tithes and offerings. Uh, opportunity to give back to the Lord as he is prospered in our lives as he has given unto us. We find uh, count of this by the apostle Paul. And Paul writes, but this I say, he which soared sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soared bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has prospered in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God love. Receive, Father, the tithes and offerings, blessing that it may be used for the uplifting of thy kingdom. And we ask that you would bless those, Father, who are able to give. And we also ask that you would bless those who wanted to give but couldn't at this time. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts for communion. The Apostle Matthew reminds us of the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior that was sacrificed for the remission of our sins, that we may have a right to the tree of life. We find an account of this taking place in chapter 26, verses 26 through 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is the blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins but i say unto you i will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when i drink anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for thy Lord and Savior, Father, that we may have a right to the tree of life. Thank you, Father, for the sacrifice that was made for our sins. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now commune. In the Bible, we read of a beautiful prayer, a prayer, verily prayer, sent to heaven above. It was prayed by a heart that was laid on with him. Filled, it was filled with such Wonderful love. When the when he was praying, Jesus was praying there in Gethsemane. Say, loving Father. Say, loving Father, if you will, let this cup pass from me. No, he was thinking, no, he was thinking, grief, death, 
would bring to his own. Deep was his sorrow. Deep was his sorrow when he was praying alone. Good morning, church. We have our church announcements this morning. We have um, announcements of our, our events upcoming events for this week. We do have Tuesday night prayer and supplication at 7 o'clock. Uh, OWAF on 10 a.m. on the 8th. The men's um, LG&D part 4, 10 a.m. Sunday morning worship on the 11th at 8 a.m. And ladies empowerment class at 10.30 a.m. That's also on the 11th. Uh, we have Zoom and phone conference information. Um, that's on um, conference and information. That's on the Tuesday, December 6th, in OWAF News. That's at 7 p.m., 10 a.m. We have our sick and shut in Ingrid Anfield, Mitchell Davis, Landon Doss, Jacqueline Jones, Rory Thomas, Yolanda Thomas, Thompson, Kermit White, Charles Ingram. Rhonda Brown, Ernestine Doss, Gregory Howard, Kana Preston, Sonia Thomas, Margaret Wiggins, Annie Brown, Marsha Cook, Henry Ward, Sandra Jones, Richard Rose, Ernest Hunter, Sharon Wiggins, Carlton Hunter. No calls and visitors, Mitty Fowler. Not residing Dade County, Valerie Brown, Shadon Hawkins, Gwen McQueen, Margaret Simmons, Dorinda Crumity, Emma Garvin, Troy McQueen, Ella Trice, Emma Davis, Betty Kendall, Ron Rowe, Carolyn Cephas. Uh, let us support our sister Bridget uh, Daniels as she welcomes the birth of a baby girl. Mother and baby are doing well. Please search the following registries by using Bridget, uh, um, no addition, E. Daniels, um, as you see fit. Um, Target, Walmart, and Amazon. We have a grand opening Hollywood University Bible College sponsored by Pierce Street Church of Christ, Hollywood, Florida. Their vision is to build strong Christian believers in every nation who have a solid foundation to bear fruit in Jesus Christ. We believe in the nine gifts of the spirit and we promote all nine gifts, workforce offering, hospitality, culinary arts, um, AC, refrigeration, health and safety, nursing, preparation and cosmetology. There's more information to come. Um, we have bereavement. Our hearts and prayers go to the family of Sister Jackie Dunn at the passing of her mother. Funeral details will come at a later date. Let's lift Sister Lena Doss up in prayer at the passing of her great uncle, Harry Scott. Please pray for those, um, all those who need prayer, all those who are sick, shut in, those who need prayers for bereavement also, please. We have also uh, Sixth Street Church of Christ. Um, hold on one second. Pompano Beach. This is with the. Uh, we're celebrating our Heritage Kwanzaa program. That's with uh, featuring song groups. That's Saturday, December 17th at 4 p.m. Dinner will be served following the program. That again. Okay, this is the second part to it. Uh, it's Kwanzaa time again. We're having our program on Saturday, December 17th from 4 to 6 p.m. This year, the Majestic Voice of Brownsville and the Harmonizers will perform. If you plan to attend, please write your name on the sign up sheet in the foyer. The deadline for signing up is Thursday, December 8th. It's, an, it's important that you sign up because we need an accurate count for the take. Uh, take our dinners that will be provided. I think that's supposed to be take out dinners that will be provided. Just if you're interested in performing on the program, poem, song, etc., please speak with Patsy Graham or Beaches Ramsey. Thank you. Uh, 
mark your calendar. We have a weekend of celebration for Brother and Sister uh, Ward. That's Saturday on the 17th, December 17th. Uh, they have a church picnic at Weaver Park. That's in Pompano Beach. And on Sunday, they have a worship and program Deerfield at the Deerfield Beach Church of Christ. Um, we have Brownsville Youth presents their gospel meeting, Making an Impact. The theme is uh, Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Um, the date is December 11th and 13th. The time is 7 p.m. nightly. Uh, Church of Christ Christian Women Living Courageously in a Spiritual um, Pandemic. In a Spiritual Pandemic. That's April 20th through the 23rd. That you have to contact Sister, Sister Shirley Scott for details. Uh, December, we have our uh, birthdays. Um, this week, we have Robert Wiggins Sr., which is already passed. Uh, his birthday already passed on the 1st. Latricia um, Pascoe was on the 1st. Andre St. Flores on the 4th. And Casey Wiggins was on the 8th. Parker Daniels was on the 9th. Jerry Daniels is, um, these are coming up the 8th. Um, Parker Daniels on the 9th of December. Jerry Jones is on the 11th. And Jaquie St. Floris is on the 11th. Bob Moody is on the 12th. Quintrell Daniels is on the 15th. Uh, Ashley Hutchinson is on the 23rd. Wilbur Thomas is on the 23rd. Annie Brown is on the thir uh, 31st. Demaya Mitchens is on the 31st. And uh, I won't be able to go home in peace if I don't mention somebody's birthday who's on the 6th. It's my lovely wife, her birthday is this Tuesday, <laughs> December 6th. I know she thought I was going to forget. She's sitting back there whispering with my daughter because they thought I'm going to forget. But I didn't. But yeah, so her birthday is Tuesday, which is the 6th. Uh, we also have further um, information on the 6th Street Church of Christ, which is 2190 Southeast 6th Street, Pompano Beach, Florida. Uh, that's the annual Thanksgiving and praise singing on Sunday. Oh, that's already passed. Yeah, that's already passed. So uh, Sandra Jones is also asking for continued prayer. She will be having a medical procedure. That's already passed also. I don't know why they gave me this. So this, 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 these things have already passed. I'm sorry. They gave that to me this morning. So um, that's the, those are the church announcements. Thank you. What are you saying? I have um, a correction in one of the announcements that Brother Doss made. Michael Jones was the person that went to um, Brownsville. That was Michael Jones. Okay, Brother Bowden got too many other duties. So I just want to make sure that's um, out there right. Let us stand. When we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be oh, when we all say jesus will sing and shout the victory okay. let us pray father we come father we come to you humbled Father, for this worship service, even go our way. Watch over us, Lord, in your son's name, Jesus, who died on the cross. 